Get your donkey saddle. Okay, folks, we're about ready to. We're actually going to start right now. So let's let's uh, have a moment of silence while we pray. Woo! All right. Everyone gets in line. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we are going to start. So please, just just till we pray. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> simmer down now. Simmer down now. All right. Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to get together with our brothers and sisters to praise you, worship you. Help us to be completely um, in a frame of worshiping you today, Lord. Uh, help us to f just put everything else aside except for our relationship with you right now, Lord. We thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We got right, Tom and Ron playing worship for us right today. Right for sunshine. Rock and roll for Jesus. Come on. Um, good morning. R &R. Good morning. You know, it's always difficult to get us out of the equation and put him, you know, as the equal sign. And um, the first thing I'm going to start off with is uh, come as you are by Crowder because basically that's what happened to me this morning. I woke up at uh, five minutes after eight. And I came as I am. I have no socks on. I was going to say that, but I thought that was going to be around. Not like you are. All right, come on, let's pick it up. Let's go. Let's go. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. I'm broken hearted, let the rescue begin. Come find your mercy, a sinner, come near. What has no sorrow that I can't heal? What has no sorrow that I can't heal? So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. Thank you. 
I'm sure right. glad you guys didn't notice the mistakes. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Come on. We'll call us, we'll call you. Come on. Not ready for the studio yet. Yes, you are. Uh, this one you'll recognize. You know, some, we always fail to realize, well, not always, but quite often we fail to realize when grace is given us, and uh, we sometimes uh, are resentful at that grace. We have to learn to accept it. Um, and so, that's the song. All right, let's pick it up. Come on. Pick it up. Amazing grace, how sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace and Thus far, and grace will lead us home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me here, bringing me this wonderful group of people that allows me to look past myself. Um, yeah, I used to only see myself. That was it. Okay, so this is a new song by Crowder. I, I really like it. Um, <clears throat> it's called He Is. If you're troubled, heavy hearted, come to Jesus and find your peace. If you run down, empty handed, come to Jesus and find your strength. He is hope to the hopeless. Rest the weary help for the hurting he is he is mending the broken bearing the burdens all that you're needing he is if you
rest for the weary Help for the hurting He is, He is Mending the broken Comforter, counselor, prince of peace, author and maker of everything, defender, deliverer, king of kings, he is, he is, helper and healer forevermore, savior and shelter through every storm, my refuge, redeemer, Lord of lords, he is, he is, child of heaven and son of man, provider, Tom and Ron, a big hand, huh? <laughs> solo, guitar solo. No, careful. Watch your watch your wire there. You're coming around. You're like a dog with a leash. Look out. There you go. All right, let's give Tom and Ron a big hand, huh? Boy, that guitar just adds some, something to that. It makes it really special. Thank you so much. Um, you, you have a beautiful voice, Tom. I love hearing you sing. Good morning, everybody. Um, I know we prayed already once, but what's wrong with praying again, right? Dear Lord, uh, we, we come here to worship you and praise you today, Lord. We thank you for the lives you've given us. Help us to live lives worthy of, your, of our calling by you, Lord. And uh, we pray that you be part of this service. Uh, help us to lay down all our burdens at your feet right now and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, man. Beautiful morning. We don't even need the heaters anymore, right? <laughs> Just for a minute. So uh, anyway, yeah. So we got some announcements here. Uh, Friday night is R and R. We had like I think we had like forty five people here. We're starting to get um, some momentum going. So come and join us on Friday night at seven p.m. seven to eight thirty ish, eight thirty quarter to nine ish, somewhere around there. Um, and we're serving food now. And I know it's been pizza the last couple of months, but this next week we're having tacos <laughs> so hey that's a little improvement come on it's a little healthier a little less bread you know a little less cheese so um hey it's better than nothing right and coffee and water and all that kind of stuff so come and join us um we're having uh, a a really good time it's it's a lot of fun and uh, sabrina joined us for the last for the first time this friday and we we're so blessed to have her thanks for joining us sabrina <laughs> Okay, the couple Bible studies that are going on um, are the Life Recovery Bible Study that myself, Gavin, and uh, Dave Thorne lead. And I believe it's my turn this week, isn't it? Yeah. It is. I don't know. It's one more thing to do. That's good. It's a blessing. <laughs> anyway, come and join us. It's a wonderful time. You see my email on there. If you want to join, I can send you the link. Um, we are going to go live pretty soon here. Um, just be patient. When we go live, we'll let you know. Um, and then also Andy's Thursday night co-ed Bible study, which ours is co-ed as well, but Andy's on Thursday night, 630. Uh, if you want the Zoom link, uh, go to acburnham at aol.com. Where is Andy? There he is. Let's give Andy a hand. Good to see you, Andy. Take all the attention off me. Um, okay, those who need showers, uh, we have showers here today at, from 4 to 6 p.m. Then they serve supper. Oh, what's that? And then they serve supper right after in the courtyard over there. And they, from what I understand, they're serving some really good meals. So if you want to go get a food, get a, a meal, a shower and meal, that's a time to do it. And then on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 11 a.m., you just go over there, you'll see people standing on that um, 
near that door over there where the showers are. Um, just show up and um, you can get in line. So probably the earlier you show up, the earlier you'll get a shower. So um, show uh, what's that? Have more hot water. Yeah, yeah, more you have hot to water. Take a shower to eat the dinner. No. <laughs> you have to eat the dinner to take a shower. No. Wait, 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 wait. All right. Listen. Um, yeah, and then sometimes some of us need some of us need to wash our mouths out. No, I'm just right, kidding. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Me, I was working on the dryer yesterday. I need to wash my mouth out uh, with soap. So uh, anyway, <laughs> she's right. Anyway, sorry. Um, the offering box is on the table. The black box over there. Let's pray for the offering because we can't pass it around the basket yet. So, uh, dear Lord, um, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for everything you provide us with. Help us to give back to your kingdom. Um, help us to give generously and joyfully, Lord. Um, and we pray for wisdom where the money is used. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Do you want to better care for your bo for the body God has given you? Yeah. And be part of the group that supports you in doing that? Healthy living for God's glory um, will resume on June 6th because uh, Pam is in Connecticut. She went to Connecticut today. So it's going to be our last class before they start a new one, right? The last one. So, oh, and we're supposed to bring some dish yeah. of one of the recipes she gave us. I got so good luck with that. <laughs> you can make some kefir and bring it if you know what that is. Trust me, you don't even want to know what that is. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, some people like it. I'm, I can't. Like, anyway. So come and join us. Um, now, here's another thing is that we want everyone to be involved in our service and in and, R&R and, &R and Step Closer. Because the only way we figure out what our spiritual gifts are was that we just get involved and we start to figure out, we start to interact with one another when we're serving. It's a, it's a blast coming here, setting up together. It's, a, it's camaraderie. It, it, it's fellowshipping. So we want everyone to be involved. So we have opportunities for servers at R&R. &R, um, and we're having a hard time getting enough people, enough servers every Friday night. So if somebody would like to do that, come and see me or Dave um, or Gay. Or Susie and we'll talk about that later okay um, and um, and we also want some greeters as well because look we have people that greet all the time but we want as many people involved as we can so that um, we can have different greeters coming in so we all get to know each other right if it's the same people doing the same things over and over um, it, it's you start to get into this little rut of this the same old thing over and over so please help us we need help setting up and tearing down which you can see dale for um and you can also see me and i'll put you in right in touch with the right person or william for that matter for r and r um and then we're gonna we also need scripture readers because sabrina's gonna read our scripture today um, when i'm done here um so if you'd like to do that um if you'd like to do that see dave right dave is that who's supposed to see all right see dave and he'll set you up and then we're going to start doing some five-minute testimonies on um, the beginning of sharing time yeah. for people to share about where they are in their faith, uh, where God has brought them from. Um, so this is an important thing. We're going to do this in the sharing time once a month. We're going to start with once a month. So if you'd like to do that, see Dave or myself, and we'll coach you. And it really needs to be five minutes. It's hard to, go, to stop at five minutes. So if you're interested, you may have speaking gifts that you don't know about that that you can try and for me my walk with christ has been stepping out in faith many times when i didn't feel adequate and he's always supplied me the power to do it so please if you're god if you feel god knocking on your heart right now sign up and it will bless you when you're done so anyway thank you without further ado i would like to bring up our teacher julie who's going to teach us on oh no, i'm sorry sabrina come on up and read the scripture come on all right i want to read genesis 16 the part one the problem one through six now sierra um abram wife had born or boned him no child she had a female egyptian servant whose name was <clears throat> hagar and siri and abram behold now the lord has prevented me from bearing a child or children go into my servant and may be that i shall obtain children by her 
and Abram listened to the voice of Sari. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sari, Abram's wife, took Hagar and Egyptians, her servants, and gave her Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went to Hagar, and she convinced and when she saw that she had convinced, she looked with a contempt on her mistress. And, Sir, and Siri and said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she had convinced, she looked on me with a con Oh, I'm sorry. Am I reading the same line? Okay, no. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. She had to convince. She looked on me with the contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sari, Behold the servant in the power. Do to her as you please. Then Sari dealt harshly with her, and she fleed from her. Part 2, the turning point. 7 3 or 7 through 13 the angel of the lord found her by spring of water in the wilderness the spring on the on the way to sir and he said to Har or hagar servant of siri where have you come from and where are you going she said i'm fleeing from my mistress Sierra, um, siri and the angel of the lord said to her return to to your mistress and submit her to her the angel of the lord also said to her i will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude <clears throat> and the angel of the lord said to her behold you are pregnant and shall bear a son you shall you should call him or his name ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction, he shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his ki kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, truly, here I have seen him who looks after me. Part 3, the conclusion, 13 verses 13 through 15. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said truly, here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the will, or yeah, the will was called Bear, this is a little hard. Bear, I forgot the word, so I'm sorry you guys. <laughs> I'm a horrible pronouncer. <laughs> it's life between Kanish and Baird. And Hagar Baird or bore Abram, a son of, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. <laughs> Hey, let's give it up for Drop. Sabrina. Yeah. Way, way to read a, a language she doesn't even know with like two seconds of prep. I, she showed up and I said, hey, can you read this? And she's like, uh, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, so this is a very... Um, amazing story right this is this is the this is a story where you know it's kind of like if you have a little kid cover their ears you know right like there's all kinds of stories in the bible so let's review where we've come from and where we're going as god spoke to hagar so let's think about last week um what was going on in the life of abram last week can anybody remember anything 
Yeah, he had a vision, right? Yeah. yeah, he had a big vision. Any thoughts on that vision? Uh, God said that he would have a multitude of descendants. Right, he's going to have many, many descendants. Right. Any other thoughts? Why over here? Yes, there's lots of land, land and descendants. Okay. Yes, yes. The Lord is going to be his shield and yes. not to worry. Not to worry. God's going to take care of him. Right. Right. Okay, I'm going to ask Pastor Bruce something. <laughs> Stop playing with your phone. <laughs> okay. All right. So guys, pay attention. Okay. Okay, Abram had a response to God, and he responded a certain way. Do you remember how he responded? I'm trying to remember what, what I said. <laughs> well, what did he say? What did he did he did he blow God off and say, "Yeah, okay, go talk to somebody no, else." No, well, he had some questions. He had some follow-up questions. Yeah. You know, how's this going to happen? Yeah. Show me how 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 can I keep uh, trusting this when it's been ten years right. since you right. started this promise. Yeah. And so that's what he's. Yeah. He, but it wasn't, it was, I think it was more about how's this going to work? Not yeah. like, I don't believe you. It's how you, how show me how this, work? yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So he had some conversation. So, so the one piece of the puzzle that God dropped last week to Abram is, hey, this is going to be a biological son. It's not somebody who's going to inherit your property because there's somebody in your household. Now this, there, you're going to have a son from your own body. And that was what Bruce and, um, like you were saying, Bruce, Abram went back to God and said, well, how's this going to work? So God dropped that, that spoiler last week that the sun is coming from your own body. And then real high point for Abram, it says he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Amen. Whoa, Abram, <laughs> drop the mic. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can just walk off into the yeah, sunset. I'm so done with my life of faith. It doesn't get better than that. Well, I think Abram experienced what I like to call retreat syndrome, where you go away and you meet the Lord God Almighty and he shows himself to you and your life is changed and it is great. It doesn't get better than this. And then you have to drive home. <laughs> the week after the retreat. Oh my gosh. So this whole chapter is the week after the retreat. Wow. Okay. It's not really a week. Actually, some commentators think that this, all this stuff went on about two years after God said, oh, you're going to have a son born from your own body. So if we look in part one in verses one through six, like Bruce said, Abram's trying to figure out, well, how is this going to happen? And Sarai's still not pregnant again, each month, not pregnant. Okay. And the interesting thing about verse one through six is who is missing. There's a key character here that is not mentioned. Any ideas? Sarah? No, Sarah's mentioned. God, where is God? God is absent right now. Okay. The interesting thing is nobody is talking to God in this first paragraph. Sarai's not talking to God. Abram's not talking to God. Hagar's not talking to God. All three of them could have reached out to God Almighty and say, what's the deal? It's been two years. None of them do that. Okay. So you see Abram's character is a total turnaround from last week. Last week, he was like doing all kinds of stuff. He was chopping up animals, shooing off birds. He was believing God. He was asking questions. He does really pretty much nothing this week except be really passive and not take initiative for anything. Sarai, his wife, she's really desperate and resentful. And she is start thinking, starts thinking, okay, biological son, I don't seem to be the key player here. So she's proposing a human solution to a supernatural problem. Okay. Hagar, I love Hagar. She's like my favorite character in this story. She starts out verses one through six, very powerless. She's a slave. She's just a piece of property. She's just a womb. That's it. And then it flips, doesn't it? Because she does get pregnant 
and then she starts using some power because now she's got some cards to play but it backfires on her she starts showing contempt for her mistress and she's still a slave and so she gets treated harshly and she flees the scene now the interesting thing about sarai and hagar is it's really a story about two women abram's just kind of passive and those two women because they're not connecting with god too much they're connecting with what their surrounding culture tells them and back in those days in this ancient time a woman was only significant and protected if she could produce male children that is her retirement plan that is what she can write in her christmas card that's all she gets to write she does not write about what school she went to what job she has what activities she's doing what girlfriends she has there's only one question for sagar and hagar is how many baby boys have you had today and they got nothing both of them got nothing and and hagar is a slave she doesn't even get to write a christmas card okay so Sarah and Hagar start connecting with their surrounding culture. Now, the interesting thing about this is last week, did God actually say that Sarai was going to be the mother for the child? No. Okay. He didn't drop that piece of the puzzle yet. So you can kind of understand Sarai's kind of idea. In fact, this idea didn't just occur to Sarai. This was... Um, this happened in the surrounding culture at that time. There were laws written about what to do when a big rich guy had a lot of stuff and no male heirs. And they wrote laws saying, no, yeah, yeah, you can use the servant option. Yep, you can have a surrogate pregnancy so someone else can have your kid besides your wife and that kid will be your male heir. The thing is, is the Bible, if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it comes out strongly in support of monogamy, not polygamy. And if you track these families, these patriarchal families in Genesis, there's all kinds of surrogate children born and, and polygamy, and it never works out well. There's always some sort of drama and trauma that comes from having <clears throat> multiple wives. And um, imagine there'd be trauma if there'd been multiple husband but that never was an option so <laughs> okay there was just multiple wives so um and we can see yeah that's not a problem. so we can see that with one man and two women in one household it's going to be dramatic okay and um so sarah gives hagar to abram and hagar as a slave has no right of refusal she can't say uh yeah no i don't think so so actually in our culture, we call that rape, if someone has no right of refusal. And she does get pregnant, but the thing is, Sarai sees that her status is getting smaller as Hagar's stomach is getting bigger. And she flips, she, she just flips on Hagar and she treats her heart harshly. Now she probably did not beat her within an inch of her life because she's carrying the all important kid. But just use your imagination, right? What kind of ways could Sarai make Hagar feel like this big? Maybe she got slapped a little, but you know her life was just miserable, okay? So we, we see at the end of verse six that Hagar just ups and leaves and flees out into the desert, pregnant and alone. Wow, what a turnaround from last week. Things are not going well for God's people here. Now, I want you to think about your life. Have you ever just had a really overwhelming, terrible situation and you just panicked and tried to run from your problems? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to say a sentence about that? Or do you want to just say, yep? I just want to say, yep. <laughs> just, yep. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, let's just agree that, yup. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Now, I have never been a slave, and I've never been in a desperate situation like Hagar. But I do remember trying to physically run away from my problems in my first two years of sobriety from alcoholism. I was sober, 
but I was having some undiagnosed health problems and all I knew was that I was itchy and irritable all the time. It turns out I was allergic to some foods and I didn't know it. I was exhausted because I wasn't sleeping and I was irritable. And one Saturday I had this argument with my kids. One of those arguments where you scare yourself because you see something about yourself and you're like, oh my God, I can't be around anyone right now. And Dale was home, thank God. So I just ran to my car, I ran to our uh, big minivan and I ran out with my keys, my phone, my knitting bag, my Bible. And I just jumped in the car. I said, I, I gotta leave, I'll be back later. I didn't want to leave my family, but I had to leave my situation. I just remember being completely out of my mind of I just have to escape and I charged into my car and I got on Highway 101 going south and I looked at my gas tank and it was full and I thought I have to go to Santa Barbara because when I get to Santa Barbara I'll run out of gas so that must be where I should go I should go to Santa Barbara and I did that stone cold sober okay <laughs> so you know it was kind of crazy now there's, I did that sober, but there's another way we can run away, with, run away without moving a step, without even getting off the couch. And that is by using mind-altering drugs or behavior. My drugs of choice are alcohol, flour, and sugar. So think about your life. Do you have any drugs of choice? Yep. And, yep. <laughs> He's just like, yep. That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> okay. All right. I was expecting a little more participation, but I guess since we're on YouTube and all. Um, so, all right. Anyone, anybody want to call out some drugs of choice? Not, not yours, but you have seen some individuals. Things. What? Things. 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 Possessions. Oh, Amazon. Where are you, my friend? <laughs> click, click, click. Yes. Money. Money. Yeah, it goes with the things, right? You need the money for you the Can't thing. get the things without the money. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sex. Sex. Oh. Gotta love the dopamine surge. Okay? Any other? Coffee. Coffee. Caffeine where you are my friend. Energy drinks. Energy drinks. I'll, anger. Anger. I oh. can't keep up. Surfing on that righteous indignation. Take it all the way to the shore until you look around and say, oh, God, who did I hurt in the meantime? <laughs> you know? Entertainment. Entertainment. Oh, oh. binge watching Netflix. Mindless eating. Mindless eating. Yeah. Just open the mouse and keep shoving it in. That dopamine. You get your dopamine there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Plus, okay, there's other stuff, too. You Nobody's saying that you guys are so so nice. I mean, there's meth, there's heroin, there's alcohol. You said not to. No, I did. Oh, my bad. Meth. Yeah, meth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, see, Hagar's going on a run, but, you know, we can go on a run with meth, right? And heroin, and alcohol, and opiates. Pills. What? Pills. Pills, yeah. Yeah. Like, there, I mean, you guys, there's tons of way to run away, right? You don't have to jump in your minivan. Right? So that's, that's Hager. Okay, let's move on to part two where it gets a little more dramatic. Okay, the, um, oh yeah, we already read it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so in, in verse seven, Hagar actually stops running for a minute because of her circumstances. She stops running because she's thirsty, okay? She's in the desert, there's no water. And finally, God shows up. And he is the active participant. He shows up and he finds her. He comes and looks for her. Nobody was looking for him in verses 1 through 6, but now he comes. And he seeks, he takes matters into his own hands and he seeks her and he finds her. He finds her at a spring or a well. And unlike Abram or Sarai, God, the angel of the Lord, calls her by name. He knows and he sees her. And he asked her two questions. Where did you come from and where you're going? Where are you going? Now she only answers one because she only can, she only knows the answer to one. She knows where she came from, 
she tells her what's happening I, you know I've been mistreated by my mistress but she doesn't really have a plan so she can't really tell him where she's going okay and then God tells her something he gives her an amazing promise like he gave Abram last week he tells her guess what your destiny it's not death you weren't born to just die today that's not what I want you to do you're going to be a mother of a great nation and your descendants, your kids, they're not going to be slaves. In fact, they are going to not get along with a lot of people. <laughs> but that's okay, because they won't be slaves. Okay? And Hagar probably won't care that her son is going to be like a wild donkey of a man. Have you ever seen too many wild donkeys have um, saddles and bridles? No! They kick them off, right? He's going to be able to do stuff that she hasn't really been able to do during her life, okay? And then he tells her, the Lord has listened to your affliction. He, the Lord is not like Sarai and Abraham, or Abram. He listens to her. He hears her and he sees her. Now, I want you to think about your life. Have you experienced God seeing and listening to you in the midst of any difficulties? Okay, I see some heads nodding. Anybody want to shout out some things? Right, I remember that. It was a few weeks ago. You said you had a breakthrough. And it was really a spiritual new thing. And then, you know, I know you got a new job. And a lot of things have turned around. I seen it going a lot more further than it ever had, so yeah. I'm really happy that I'm able to get this far. That's great. That's great. Any other um, people that want to share any of the, the, the thoughts? God has always been. Um, God has always been there for us, for Ted and I. We go through so many tribulations. More than two years now, and God's still there. He's faithful all the time. I praise His name. Yeah, so you're meeting Him in the midst of really difficult times. Every day, you're seeing Him. And I see that the endurance and hope that you get from seeing God. Yeah, yeah. And, okay, so let's, let's I'm going to go ahead and move, uh, read these last few verses, the conclusion. Um, because I love them so much. I think it's the heart of the story. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God of seeing, she said. For truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called beer. Oh wait, no, it's not beer. Okay, bad alcoholic. Okay, therefore the well was called beer Lahai Roy. It lies between, between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram called his name of his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham. So we see in these verses that the conversation that Hagar had with God changed her because she gave a special name to God. You are the God who sees me, who looks after me. And she had a new relationship with God. And with this new relationship, saving faith comes to Hagar. She gets newfound confidence, and she gains the courage to go back to Abram's household to have her baby. Because the problem is that she's alone. You can't have a baby by a spring alone in the wilderness and survive. If she needs to live another day, she actually has to go back. She is valuable to the household because of her pregnancy, so they're probably not going to beat her to death. Okay? As hard as it is to go back, that's what she needs to do. Now, one day in the future, we're going to read more about Hagar. It will be time for Hagar to leave this abusive situation. But it's just not today. Okay? Today, God sees Hagar. He talks to her. And then Hagar, through the eyes of faith, can see God. So... I, I haven't had a vision like Hagar. I haven't actually physically seen an angel of the Lord. But I see God because I believe the words he spoke to me. He says in Matthew 28, I will never leave or forsake you, Julie, for lo, I am with you always. So think about yourself now. 
your, your life. What is one way that you have seen and believed in God? Would anyone like to share? I'm sober. Every day, man, you wake up another miracle. Yes, William. You're asking how we how we personally have seen God? Yeah. Even if I, you haven't actually seen an angel. How I've seen him through an officer. Really? Yes. And how did that... God I used to run you? from him, and he extended an olive branch out, and now today it's the actions. Today, I'm not going to say when, but because it's not happening yet, but I'm coming up on three years clean, and you know what? Yeah. Yeah. So, I think about how if God could use a talking donkey or a burning bush, why couldn't he use a cop? Yeah. Why couldn't he? Why couldn't he? He did. Because I remember you telling, telling us about that, that that cop looked at you and he... He showed some caring about what was going to happen to you, and, and it really changed. He you. did, and we play golf every Saturday. Dude, I'm you play tough. golf with a cop? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. So, and I heard God his. changed you. Amen. God really changed you. Well, yeah, he really did. He really did, because when I met him, I heard God tell me, he told me, here's your help. Here's your help. Yeah. And I thought, you're joking, right? Yeah. You're joking, because yeah. the cop was like, hey, man, don't run, because I was going to bolt. I was I was on it, and he was like, "No, don't run, please." <laughs> no, not yet. That's <laughs> great. So, and now, and today, this cop tells me, "You progress, you don't regress," and that's it, the Lord. I mean, I don't know. We we can't see the God. We can't see God because we're sin, right? Yeah, he has this thing. To me, God is generally invisible. Yes. You know, so it's a challenge, right? We hear and feel him. Relationship with yes. the invisible God. You know, Believing but, in something you can't see. But like, like with you, he sends people mm -hmm. and he sends things he makes. People and nature. Amen. And so I see God through people and nature. You know. He makes himself known through his creation. You know, many times yeah. the like, sky look at the, and the sun the, and the animals yeah. and my dog. You know, like, yeah. you know, things that he has made, he comforts me and yeah. lets me know yeah. that he's and I also see God through this book, this Bible. Amen. Amen. You know, and there's there's many times I've seen him through that. Well, remember my story of charging down 101? Okay, I'm going to Santa Barbara. Okay, so I dimly sensed that my life was careening out of control. I called my sponsor, who was not home. So I called a fr another friend. And this is a plug to have more than one phone number in your phone, because sometimes they're not home, right? So I called another friend of mine, and she answered the phone, and I told her my sad, sorry tale. And um, she said, Julie, she was so kind. She goes, Julie, I, I get that you're really overwhelmed, and it sounds like you really need a break. And I said, yeah! <laughs> and she's like, do you um, need to go to Santa Barbara? And I said, uh, and I looked up, and I was going 101 South, and I saw this green freeway sign, and it said 101 South, 85, Burnell Road. And I said, I can take Highway 85, which goes to Los Gatos. And I said, I can go to Los Gatos. And she goes, oh, why don't you go to Los Gatos? So I went, meow. <laughs> and I took 85 to Los Gatos, which, as we know, is a very nice place, right? Have you been to Los Gatos? It's pretty there. So I got there. I park my car, I sit in that little park thing, you know, at university or whatever, and I'm looking around going, okay, here I am in Los Gatos, you know, I'm still itchy. And I looked up and there was this little hotel motel thing, and it it looked pretty nice. It wasn't the kind of place where people are shooting up in the parking lot. It was, it was actually kind of nice. And I thought, that's where I want to go. So I sort of walked into the lobby and I looked pretty out of it. My hair was crazy. I had my old yoga pants and I had my ratty knitting bag. And I walked up to the clerk and said, um, I just need a room for the afternoon. I just need a little break. What's your cheapest room? And she looks at me and she gives me this really kind look. She goes, 
let's see what we can do. So she starts playing Arctic Me. And so she goes, well, the cheapest room we have. And she told me, and I said, whatever, here's my credit card. And so I walked in and it was the smallest room I've ever seen. I think it was actually a twin bed. I don't know. It just had a tiny little room and then a small TV and a bathroom. And I thought, great. And so I just sat down, I watched a little TV, I took a nap, and my sponsor called me back. I told her the long, sad story, and she's like, okay, all right. I could tell she's like, okay, how to control sponsee. She goes, are you, are you thinking of drinking? No, I just can't do life. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, let's, so let's pray, let's pray. So we're praying, and, and so she goes, why don't you take a nap? So I took a nap, and then I opened my Bible and started reading it and started praying, and I met God and God you know said okay all right you had a nap you got to watch some TV what are you gonna do and I'm like I'm gonna go back and apologize to everybody <laughs> so I come back and Dale's like he looks at me like uh, are you done <laughs> you <know? laughs> and cuz you know I'm just like ah! and so I come back say sorry to my kids sorry to my husband and I made dinner. I don't even know if I made dinner. I took some Benadryl, which helped with the itchiness. And I found out two weeks later, after going to the doctor, I was allergic to soy and corn, which is in everything. So by six months later, I felt much better because I figured out how not to eat soy and corn, like corn syrup. It was like everything. So I, um, it really was important that I had my phone. Because if I hadn't had my phone, I probably would have ended up in Santa Barbara, which is four hours away from Santa Clara, okay? So when you're going crazy, don't leave without your phone, okay? Get your keys, maybe a Bible or two, all right? Um, now, when we apply the story of Hagar today, we reach a dilemma. And that's because our modern society is different from what was going on there. She, she was a slave. She really didn't have many options. Today, when somebody is in the middle of rape and domestic abuse, they have options. There's the YWCA on 2nd Street in downtown San Jose. It is a big building with a large wall. And as I used to teach English down there, every now and then I'd see a, a taxi cab come out and some woman get up with a car seat and just scurry inside. And once she got inside, she was safe because nobody's getting in there. It's a, it's a shelter for kids and, and women. There's also an organization called Next Door Solutions. They have a 24-7 hotline, which is 408-279-2962. Just Google it. If you're feeling unsafe, you can reach out to these people. And Very good people. Yes. I've already had started talking to them. Yeah. They're, they're good to help you. Yes, Andre? Um, I'm pretty sure that there's refuges in yeah, Oakland. It's just been designed. I mean, you could have found refuge over there. Right yeah, Los I, I'm sure, I'm sure I could have gone to Oakland, but that's like two hours from my house. Los Gatos is 15 minutes. Santa Barbara. <laughs> no, so, see, I think the, the important thing to the story is that I needed a break, but I didn't need to leave. All right. So 15 minutes is really the best place, you know, because when you up and just leave your family, the further you go, the harder it is to come back. Oh. So it's good to get a break, but it's also good not to really leave when you don't really need to. But if you do really need to, you can, like Sabrina was saying, you can talk to Nextdoor Solutions. And there's, a, I, there's also like you could go to Oakland down by the waterfront by Jack London Square and places like that, you know. You have to go someplace safe though, you know. Um, and so if you're in some sort of um, domestic situation that's abusive, talk to Bruce afterwards, talk to me, call Next Door Solutions. Um, you don't have to stay like Hagar did. So um, I just wanna conclude in saying that in by the Holy Spirit gives us eyes of faith so we can see an invisible God. And, but what we have to do is we have to stop running just a little bit and get some rest and pray and then God can show up and show us. And we can turn our eyes towards the person that sees us. Now I want to leave you with this because this story happens in the beginning of the Bible, right? But it's a big book. If you keep reading, there's more. 
So I want you to think of three words, women, wells, and water. In our story today, an outcast fleeing woman meets a God who sees her and promises a great nation is going to come from her. But the problem with this story is at the end of the story, the children of Hagar are still going to be outcasts from the family of God. They're going to be dwelling away from all their brothers. The child of the promise actually is going to come from Sarai, and his name is going to be Isaac. Now Isaac is going to have descendants, and many years later, one of his descendants will be David, who becomes a great king. And then many years later after that, a descendant of David will also be a great king. His name is Jesus. And in the story, the descendant of Sarai, Jesus, will travel to an outcast nation named Samaria and meet an outcast woman at a well. And when he meets that woman at the well, he's going to say to her, I know you're thirsty because you came to the well to get some water, but whoever drinks of the water I give will never thirst again because the water I give them will well up them, becoming a spring of eternal life. Okay, this woman at the well is going to come to believe in this Jesus and who sees her thirsty and alone at a well. And she's going to find in Christ the living water that does not end. She's going to take that message back to her village and she becomes the first cross-cultural missionary in the Gospels. Or I mean the first missionary outside the Jews in, in the um, Gospels. So unlike this story in Genesis 16, now, today, the children of Hagar can be brought back in to the family of God. Right now, all are welcome. The children of Sarai, the Jews, and the children of Hagar, who are Gentiles, and all Gentiles can come back in. I'm a Gentile. I'm not Jewish. So I identify more with being a child of Hagar. But it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or Gentile, we can all find in Christ water for our thirsty souls. It says in Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or the Gentiles. So the question is, how do we enter into this new universal family? Well, we believe in Christ. We exercise the faith that saves us like Abram did. He believed in Christ. I mean, he believed in God and was reckoned to him as righteousness. We believe in Christ and it's reckoned to us as righteousness. And that Jesus describes this process in Revelations 3.20 when he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in to him. And he's talking about our hearts. He stands at the door and knocks on our hearts. So I'm going to say a prayer. And if you've never accepted Christ in your heart, you can, and you want to, you can pray with me. For those who already have, this is review. You can always do it again, right? <laughs> okay. Um, Lord and God, I want the living water that Jesus provides. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior and save me. Please take my life because you are the God who sees me and I want you in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Right, now, if you, if you said this for the first time, said something like this for the first time, well, the life, the Jesus road isn't really a Lone Ranger kind of activity. It's, it's done best in the company of friends. So tell somebody about it. You could tell Bruce, you could tell me, you can tell the person sitting next to you. Hey, Julie, yes. what were the three words you said? Women, wealth, and what? No, women, oh. wells, water. Oh. oh, what? Women, wells, and water. Women, wells, and water. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Well? Yeah. No, no, there wasn't any wealth in it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank so, you, Julie. Thank thanks. You. Good job. Okay. Any other questions? Thoughts? Okay. Nope. All, right. All right. Okay, I'm done. Right on, George. I'm a little right early. Right. Okay. Thank you, Julie. That was great. Um, you know, the really awesome thing about this story that I really like is because, you know, he, 
he did say, you know, that his belief um, was counted as righteousness, and he and he messed up. I mean, he took matters in his own hands, but God still blessed him, which so that when we mess up, we don't have to walk around in condemnation. We just turn back to God, and he. Now there may be some consequences for it, but he will, um, he will restore us to relationship with him. So that's the great news. So thank you, Julie. That was great. All right, we have time for sharing this morning. Dave laid out some uh, ground rules last week, and so we'd like to stick with those. Um, we're going to have a roving mic instead of people coming up here. Just raise your hand if you'd like to share, and then William will bring the mic over to you. Please keep it down to two or three minutes, and keep it about yourself if you can, or your experience, or what you learned from this lesson. Um, and uh, So anyway, so raise your hand if somebody would like to share. Uh, Sabrina. Well, if half of you haven't known yet that I have passed my training, and then I'm going to get my schedule Woo! tomorrow. And what I have learned from this lesson today is that God is always going to have a plan for you. So don't be afraid. Always listen to what he has to tell you. And make sure that you always follow him in your heart because now I do. And that's it. Thanks, Sabrina. Raise your hand. Oh, yes. You, I don't think you can. Oh, yes, you can. Oh. No, go ahead. William. I'm going to piggyback off Sabrina because you know what? taking that uh, step and <clears throat> not being afraid. You know, I can tell you this much, that three years ago I was living under a tree, literally, okay, um, a raggedy hobo, you know, and today, I mean, I mean, today God has taken me to a level I've never experienced, and he's telling me, you know, just sit back because the best is yet to come, you know, amen, enjoy the ride. And he's telling me, I got this. Just sit back. Put your seatbelt on because it might get bumpy. But you know what? I got you. And he does. And he has all of us. Sabrina, stay encouraged. Surround yourself with these mighty women. You have mighty women around you. We have a great pastor sometimes. <laughs> you are, brother. You know, I love you, man. And I have good examples in my life. He's right. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, you know what? If you really want to see what the, what uh, surrender to Christ is, you just look at William's life and see what he does. Um, there's nothing he won't do if Come I ask now. him to do it. And um, you know that's kind of what I did in the beginning was to just whatever God put in front of me. I I just stepped out, even though I mean Mark asked me to be host a long time ago. I'm like, what? I mean, stand in front of people and talk, you know? And but he's blessed me all the way, so. Uh, thank you, William. You're thank you're a big you, blessing to this you. ministry and a uh, big help family. to me. Thank you. Anybody else like to share? Over here, William. Janice. Mm. Ladies first. Um, Julie, thank you so much for that teaching. I just loved it. I love the idea that God, how Hagar said, "You're the God who sees sees me," and this that. He sees, that means he sees the wrong that's been done to me, and he also sees the wrong I do. He sees it all, um, and still is just there, right? Just there. Um, but I also want to ask for prayer. Our daughter is in the hospital because she's being induced into um, labor today. She's going to have a baby in the next, oh hopefully, 24 hours. So, what? just Amen. Can we pray now? Absolutely. Uh, grandma and Grandpa. <laughs> You're too young to be a grandma and grandpa. Elsie, right, Elsie? All right. Hey, let's pray for Elsie, everybody. Let's bow in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, um, we want to lift up our sister Elsie to you, who was a big encourager in this ministry at, at one point. And uh, Lord, we're just thankful that, um, that she was part of our body. But Lord, we lift her up to you. We pray that this uh, procedure would go smoothly, that you would be at the center of it. And at the end of it, Lord, that a, a beautiful child would come out and um, be healthy and um, that every and including Elsie would be healthy, that everybody concerned would be blessed. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, for um, her, her example to us and being uh, a joyful person. In Jesus' name, amen. So if anybody doesn't know Elsie, she was like really just... Who's next? Matthew. Um. Hey, good morning, church. Uh, just wanted to tell you guys that uh, uh, recently I've been going through, uh, you know, what seems to be a storm, and uh, 
and just recently, I don't know, it's like God has been giving me this, uh, this feeling of, uh, like he protects us in so many different ways, you know, he looks out for our well-being and, uh, and I, I've just been seeing God, uh, it's like through all these things that should be discomforting and, and you know, overwhelming, somehow he's just, I don't know, he's growing me in my faith. And I just want to uh, say thank you guys for being here. And, uh, you know, I love this church. And uh, I just want to encourage you guys that if you guys are going through any kind of storm, just to lean into God and just to trust his will for you. And... Uh, you know, God is good all the time, and I'm, I, I feel, uh, I feel really reassured, like, recently about, uh, just the way that everything is unfolding, you know, and, uh, I wish you guys the best week, yeah, God bless you. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew, would you like us to pray for you, for this storm that you're going through? Yeah. All right, let's pray for Matthew. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for our brother Matthew for um, for telling us that he's that he's going through a storm. Lord, sometimes we try to just cover that stuff up. So thank you for his courage to do that. So Lord, we just want to lift up Matthew to you. You know what storm he's going through, Father. And we pray that you would see him through the storm, that he would see you, and that you would just lift him up and to continue to grow him, Lord, in his faith. And um, just give him um, peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. Andre. You know, I want to, uh, congregation, to say this. I've been kind of dramatized from a kid. Uh, it's like somebody, you know, being abused or whatever. And the first time I saw it, it said for whites only, all right? As a kid, in New Orleans. Like, I'm trying to, I'm like, what, maybe 12 years old. And the first started, you know, understanding about different people on the face of the earth. For whites only? So... And uh, the, I guess the discrimination had just ended, well, at least on, 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 on paper. It just ended like maybe two years before, and they took down all the white signs all over New Orleans for white songs. So, the uh, only thing that has made me growing up and, you know, going through my, my journey is I've come and run across good people in all races. So, it kind of, you know, like gave me some kind of new outlook on, you know, hey, uh, about this world, but uh, I just, uh, it's a battle with me, you know what I'm saying, and I, I think some people every day, I, I even show my good Andre or my bad Andre, yeah, I got two sides, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it's like just, it's just, uh, it's tough to, uh, and when you still see things still occurring that people can't and refuse to let go of, okay, yeah. and so uh, I, I think my rest of my life I'll be dramatized by seeing that one such illustration about how this world is, and this country is, more or less. So I just want to say, you know, I want to thank God that he sent me all these blessings from different good people, you know, and all, That's what's you up. know, uh, Love you, Andre. Yeah. What's up, Andre? But I'm just saying, but it's, oh, it has an effect on me. Yeah, I'm sure it has. I, you know what, they, I want to pray for you, too. Let's pray for Andre. It's, it's um, Father, um, thank you, or first of all, thank you that um, Andre can share what's on his heart. And Lord, we want to pray that you would take away the trauma from that. Um, I, I, I don't, I couldn't imagine how that would have felt, Lord. So we just pray, Lord, that you would give Andre peace, um, bring good people into his life, and to remember that, that it's, it's um, not all of us are that way. But Lord, the kingdom of God, you are the only answer to this question, this, this, this um, thing of hate and division. And um, Lord, we're all created in in the image of you lord you created us in your image and so we all have dignity because of that lord so lord we just pray that we would all treat um, everyone the same no matter where they came from what they look like and lord just give us the hearts of jesus in jesus name amen thank you andre and thank you for andre lord Good morning. I've been sharing for the past couple of months about the state of California auditing my business on sales tax. And finally, my representative wrote a pretty nasty letter and saying, we've complied. And she lectured him and then she closed with, there will be a no change audit. 
so that means I owe no additional sales tax. Oh, oh. So, so look, we, we pray when we need something from God, but we should also pray and praise. So let's pray for this. Dear oh, Lord, thank, thank you, you so Lord. much for Jackie, for her heart, that she did everything. She didn't panic and um, fly off the deep end, but she trusted you. She went through the process and you blessed her. And so, Lord, help us to take that as an example that when hard things hit us and me, Lord, I need that too, because I don't like when things don't go right. But Lord, help us all to trust you and love you. And uh, just thank you for Jackie and her testimony. In Jesus name. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Like today. One thing I'd like to say about that is look for those people who can help you and be willing to ask for help and take their guidance and, um, do the next right thing. Yeah, yeah that's good advice. I know I'm terrible at, at accepting help. So um, it's something that God's working on. It's a thing. I mean, you know, part of it is just admitting that we have these, these weaknesses, right? Because we all have them. We all have different ones, but we all have them. And um, so anybody else like to share? We got time, but we can. I will. Um, yes, Gavin. My name's Gavin. Uh, Hi, Gavin. I, Hi, Gavin. Uh, I, I've talked to Bruce a little bit and Andy about a trial I was recently going through. Um, I don't. I don't want to get. I don't want to get specific. Um, and and I left R and R on Friday night. Um, uh, you know, still carrying the weight of this thing. It was pretty traumatic, and uh, and it's with a Christian brother, which makes it even even more difficult when um, we started a thing and it, and it got and it got hard and uh i talked to andy on the way out i get home i'm home for the night after r and r i'm making my coffee for the next day and i realize i don't have any milk usually i'll just go whatever i can deal with no milk i get in my car and i go to 7-eleven and the guy is right there in the parking lot <laughs> and, and my my intuition is to go the other way and to just not deal with it because that's what I do. I run and hide. Instead, he pulls up to me, and very sincerely, we have a real heart to heart. You know, little five minute heart to heart, and all the weight was lost, and and, and I felt like like connection was remade, and and it was like totally had God's with the milk thing, just totally had God's hand on it. <laughs> and, I mean, it, it was. And, anyway, I mean, we do. We have to. It's very very important. We pray all the time. God answers our prayers. We forget. We we sometimes don't don't acknowledge those answered prayers we're more busy thinking about the new prayers the new problems but it really is important to to realize how much he cares for us and does answer every prayer and miracles little things like that i would have been obsessing over this thing all weekend instead i just got the weight gone and figured out how to go from here and because i know it's he's a brother in christ and i know it's going to be an ongoing thing and we need to work side by side not against each other and, and that's unity in Christ's body where he is the head of the body and makes all the pieces fit together perfectly and we gotta we gotta embrace our brothers and walk in harmony and with through his power it's the only way it's possible anyways amen. thanks amen thank you Gavin you know Gavin called me right after that incident and um you know it was a real um honor that someone would call me to you know to hey talk to me because I need somebody some peace and so thank you Gavin for calling me and that's a good example that um, you know call somebody like Julie called somebody too right so um, that's that's great Gavin thank you thank, I'm, thank you for sharing that and that brings something to mind you know uh, Jeff Louie who's leaving this church soon has been mentoring me since he's been here and one of the things he said that he did in his church for many years of pastoring church was um, was make sure the prayers that we pray that we find out what happened in those prayers so that we can praise him so you know all the prayers that have been prayed here in this service we need we need to update us on them that you know hey this is what happened here's what the lord did just like gavin did like that so that we can praise god in, in these things so um try to remember the people's prayers and then let's follow up on hey how, how did god show up in this so that we can share them with each other and we can praise god for it as a matter of fact i want to pray for praise for gavin lord um, thank you for stepping in a difficult situation and Lord uh, thank you for Gavin's example that he trusted you that you were going to make this right eventually and um, 
and he didn't just run away this time, Lord. Thank you for the courage that you gave him to, to not go the other way, Lord. And um, we just thank you for your provision and your love in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Yes, Andre. Uh, Double dipping. I was, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm trying not to never judge a book by its cover, right? So I, uh, me and this guy here, Matthew, we went out to get some golf balls. I was in, dude, I didn't think he could hit the ball, man. <laughs> But he really not a bad golfer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh, now, now I'm, I've been trying to beat Pastor Andy, you know what I'm saying? Now I got to deal with this guy, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, maybe you should come play with me. You won't have any problem. Oh, no, I'll, be, I'll beat you. Hey, I guarantee I'll beat you, dude. I, I know. I guarantee it to him. I guarantee you. Five years. But hey, you would be, you would spot me some... So, uh, stroke, right? Whatever you yeah, need, yeah. bro. <laughs> just checking, man. No funds, brother. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And I need a cart. I need an electric cart. So, uh, anyway. Um, anybody else? No, oh, Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, no, 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 my well, well, I want to I first off thank Julie so much because her on, on, on the well opened up a whole new focus in, or, or opening in my eyes because how Hagar was in her position in, in um, with Abram and where she was stuck as a slave. I was never thinking about that and then how she was forced into situation. Hagar is a lot like I think a lot of us are just in the world, right? In society, trying to have to follow a certain format in everything. And so she went to a refuge in the well. And then I, I was going like, wow, okay, so this was my well, right? I, of my problems, of where I was at, this was my well. And then, and then I go back to, the, to where I'm at, at work and whatever, and then I come back to the well. I keep coming to my refuge, my place of filling myself up so then I can deal with and, and, and outflow through, through the world. And how, how you brought in that other story, it, it was just wonderful because it, it showed me that the word of God is my well so much and it encourages me in life to where I can then handle anything that comes up as long as I look to God and, and, and then he can fulfill that. Like I brought up the anger because that's one of my things. I feed on it, I think, and I, I don't want to. And so I have to have God take that away and I'm willing to have him take it away. So thank you very much. All right. Is that a hand up over there, Michael? Oh no, it's just uh, just an itch, I guess. Yeah, it's a, I guess it, I think that was the bunt sign. So bunt. <laughs> Tom, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, one of the things that, matter of fact, that the there's two things that I pray for. You know, in terms of me. Um, again, it's always got to be about me. Um. um peace of mind and show me where I'm going wrong and yeah he does he shows me where I go wrong I got a big mouth really <laughs> and uh, I if something doesn't go my way or I think someone's wrong I get resentful because <clears throat> they're not doing it the way I think they should do it and uh and then, uh, and then I, and then I feel convicted after I do a whole bunch of like blopping it out there and letting everybody know that hey, this is what this person did, you know. Blah, 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 blah. And then I feel like crap afterwards, like, and I feel like, uh, like it's not them, it's me. Um, so um, uh, there's a number of people I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I need to apologize to a number of people, and 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 um, um, uh, this is not easy for me to do. Okay, um, I've I work for Street Life Ministries, and and if I get resentful when things don't go my way, or you know, I I, I I've been slandering Dave Sharon, and and I shouldn't have, and it's been it, I finally realize it's all me and um if i don't like something you know i i'm not i just need to relax and do things in god's time not my time 
and <clears throat> this is how I destroy myself <laughs> by things not happening fast enough and um, or the way I think they should be and uh, um, I've been wrong in in bad mouthing Dave to those of, of you who have heard that from me so I, I I apologize for that and um, well, I guess and I've apologized to him actually I, I've said that to him good, good. and so um, I guess this is kind of a penance or repentant um, but uh, I just wanted to put it out we'll, there because we'll we'll I got to tell you something that Dave is fantastic yeah. and, and and we're all sinners yeah. you know we're all yeah. anyway that's I've yeah. done two minutes we're, thank yeah you. we're gonna pray for you but um, I know now I know why we get along so well because I got a big mouth too <laughs> <laughs> So let's pray. For, let's pray. Lord, thank you for um, Tom bringing his weakness to you and to us and confessing his sin, Lord. And Lord, we pray that um, you would help him not to do that again and help me, Lord, in those same, in the same um, areas of life. And uh, Lord, just help us to think before we talk um, about what, how that's going to affect the other person or person. So Lord, just thank you for Tom. Thank you for what he means to this ministry. Um, bless his marriage and thank you in Jesus name amen Woo. Kelly's double dipping wait we got someone else for his first game, first game. Oh, we, okay we will well okay we will okay you do you're right we will pray for you are you, re are you resentful we'll pray for you after forgot to pray for who sorry Kelly I can wait I just want to shout out a praise for the women's retreat yesterday um, it was it was brief, but it was refreshing. It was so great for us to be able to get together. Um, I brought my rock from yesterday, Aww. which uh, on one side you wrote what you were experiencing. For mine, it's stress, and on the other side, what how did God meet you? And He gave me His love, joy, and peace. So we had wonderful opportunities to express ourselves uh, artistically and through prayer. And the ladies, Kathy being one of them, who uh, there she is. <laughs> Who's who actually put this on? It was it was wonderful. So I just praise God for the hearts of the women uh, on the women's team that did this for us. Thank you, Dave. We will pray for that, and we'll pray for Kelly. Thank you, Dave. Um, dear Lord, we want to just thank you and praise you for the women's retreat that it um, it glorified you and brought uh, women closer to each other and closer to you. Lord, we just thank you for these wonderful gifts you give us like that. Lord, I also want to lift up Kelly, who, um, Lord, is, uh, has a passion for you and a love for you and a love for others, Lord. So we pray that you would lift Kelly up, Lord, um, and that he would continue to come to the well for, for what he needs. Come to you, Lord, for all he needs so that he can deal with everything in life, that everything that life throws at him. Thank you for the peace that he has in his life. Thank you for the man he is and the man he's becoming. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow, this is, I like this, praying all the time, right? It's really good. Yes. Can I make an announcement about it? Sure, go ahead. About OVH? Sure, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So we have a donation of clothes that came in from, and they're brand new, men's jeans, brand new. And we also got a brand new pair of Nikes, still in the box. So if anybody needs, size 10 for men, yep. There you go. They're really nice, too. I mean, our neighbor behind us works at, at Nike, and um, he's a Steeler fan. Where are you at, Nike? Oh, so, yeah. So he knows all about what we do because he lives right behind the fence, and uh, he knows all about what we're about, and he's and he, him and his mom bring his food, and, you know, they wow. he comes over, and he's like, hey, I know if you need a, um, some shoes, uh, and we have an electrician at work <clears throat> who, uh, who knows what we do, and he brings us brand new clothes. I mean, with the name tags or price tags and name tags still on them. At the brother's home? <clears throat> yeah. Well, he gives it to uh, me at work, and I bring them home. Ooh. So, um, just Are to put it. XXX sells. <laughs> 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 just we... kidding. No, that's okay. So, um. so just to let you know, and also I wanted to say thank you to Ron. Are you here, Ron? Where you at, Ron? Where'd you go? Where'd you there go? He is. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, do you have openings at our brother's home? We have three openings right now. So please, I mean, we um, 
It's not a hard criteria. If you just love the Lord. Can I move back in? <laughs> I, I can't follow those rules. You would, <laughs> you would have to stay with Bob. And I don't uh, think Bob, and thank you, Bob, for helping out at the house, man. Bob and I could coexist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last call for sharing. No, <laughs> I know. Right. Should we last pray call. for Bruce not to come to the house? Yeah. That's a good idea. All right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, thank you f to uh, Tom and Ron for the music this morning. Let's give them a big hand. And also thank you to the setup team, Dale and company. Give them a hand, everybody. And let's pray. Oh, thank Julie. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> gotta love, gotta love that the movement, man. <laughs> If I moved like that, I'd lose like 10 pounds every time I, I did. So anyway, all right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word that um, just cuts right to our heart, gets straight to the point. Um, thank you that we have the Holy Spirit, that we can uh, understand what you're trying to tell us through your word, Lord. Thank you for Julie, for the prep she did. Um, thank you for what the growth you've shown in her. Um, Lord, just thank you for everybody here, um, all the all the parts of this ministry that... Um, have to happen to make to make things work so lord we pray for the behind the scenes people um and uh, that get no recognition but they're just back there serving you lord and so we couldn't do this service without them lord so we, we want to give bestow special honor upon them and lord we just pray that these lessons we learned today we would take them home and um, use them in our life um, during the week not just on sunday but all week in all our lives. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.